Good morning everybody and welcome to our, our service this morning for the presentation of Christ in the temple. I'd like to begin by saying a special prayer for today. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple, in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The reading appointed for today is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 22. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause a falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of, his, of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, on the Feast of Candlemas, we think about Mary and Joseph coming to the temple to present baby Jesus to God. It was expected. Every Jewish family knew that they belonged to God. Mary and Joseph, as good Jewish people, would have lived their lives as though they were in permanent communion with God. Everything they did, they would do for the glory of God. Jesus opened that up for the whole of humankind, if you believe in him. As Christians, we belong to God and are in communion with God. We bring our children for baptism and or in thanksgiving, just like Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple. I suppose that is true of all children. They are never really ours, but only lent to us for the moment. They have their own lives to lead, and one day will return to God, either through turning to him themselves during their lifetime, or when their life is complete. Each and every one of us shares in that. It is true for us too for we are all children of God. As sure as night followed day, Mary and Joseph came to the temple to offer Jesus back to God because it was to God that he belonged. There was a practice at that time where all firstborn males were brought to the temple. They were presented to God, presented to a priest who represented God, 
and a sacrifice would be made in the belief that the sacrifice would go directly up to God and that would allow them to redeem their child. Obviously, they wouldn't sacrifice their child, although ultimately God's child, Jesus, would one day be sacrificed himself for the sins of the whole world. The Jewish people believed that one day God would send a Messiah that would be more powerful than King David, an earthly king that would create an earthly physical kingdom, one that would stretch across the world. In contrast to all that in Israel, there were some people who were known as the quiet in the land. They had no dreams of violence or power or armies or with banners. They believed in a life of constant prayer and watchfulness until God should come. All their lives they waited patiently upon God. Simeon and Anna, who we heard about in our gospel reading today, were like that. They spent their lives in prayer and in worship, in humble and faithful expectation, waiting for the day that God would come to comfort his people. And true to his promise, the Saviour came, not as a knight on a charger, but as a little child, the light of the world. But it's not a soft message or a fairy tale. Jesus didn't remain a child, he became a man, a man that took the sins and suffering of the world upon his shoulders. Christianity is not a fairy tale for people to hide in. It is about facing up to the world and taking it on like Christ himself. Simeon held the child in his arms and said that this child is destined for the falling and rising of many. And he turned to Mary and said that a sword would pierce her own soul too, referring to Jesus' death upon the cross. But more important than that, maybe, Simeon, a very old man who had been faithful throughout his life, had come to realise the significance of the moment. Holding that little child, he says, Lord, now let me depart in peace, for I have now seen your salvation. So what does that mean for us? We have a choice. Do we follow Christ or do we not? Our time will come and will depend upon our reaction to Jesus himself. Have we truly followed him or have we not? Amen. We're now going to listen to a piece of music or you can join in with it. See you. 
the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O God, creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth and your saving health among all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, guide and govern us by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we commend your goodness, all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed, in mind, body or estate, comfort and relieve them in their need, give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of all their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ and we give you praise for all your faithful ones with whom we rejoice in the communion of saints. And we join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.